Okay, folks. So, me and my parents just finished watching Halloween Ends. And I've watched it before they watched it with me. I've watched it five times. This is my sixth time viewing this film. And I've seen on social media all the hate that this movie is getting. I mean, people out there are shitting all over this movie. They can't find one, one good thing about it. I'd like to give my thoughts and maybe enlighten some people about what they're going for on this movie. So, when it starts and the opening titles pop up, it's blue instead of orange. Now, did anybody catch that that's watched this movie? That is the same way that Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, its main titles were in blue. Now, my take on it is, this is David Gordon Green's take on what Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, could have been with some extra stuff. It's Halloween 3 done right, in my, in my opinion. Now, people are saying the Corey character is so stupid, he's not necessary, there's no reason to give his character any kind of development like they do in the film. He is a very important aspect of this film. Now, I'm sure lots of people have seen it in theaters and on Peacock, so I can talk about it freely here. Now, if you have not seen it, I'm going to give you, right now, go watch the movie, don't watch this. I don't want to spoil anything, but we got to talk about this, dude. One guy on Facebook said, why is it so hard for Trinkus International to make a good Halloween film? To all you people out here hating it, I know what it is. You want Halloween 1978, you want Halloween 4. That's been done, dude. The formula for Halloween has been beaten into the ground. I mean, we've how many how many films do you want to see with Michael killing a bunch of people and then all of a sudden, oh, Laurie stops him. She can continue the role forever. This is her farewell. This is Jamie Lee Curtis's farewell to Michael Myers. Now, and the character of Laurie Strode. Now, let's get back to Corey here. He goes into... He gets thrown over the bridge, right? And he gets drugged into the sewer pipe. He wakes up, and he's walking around down there. Looking around, and Michael grabs him by the throat and holds him there. And staring into his eyes. The evil of Michael infects Corey. It consumes him, just as it did Michael when he was six years old and killed his sister. And then when he takes the cop, Doug, he leads Doug down to the sewer pipe to have Michael deal with him. And that's where people's, you know, Michael's weak as hell in this movie. And what is this, a wrestling match? Michael would destroy this kid, you know? Yeah, that's very true. But at the end of Halloween Kills, he's beaten down by the mob in the street. And he's pissed after that. And then he... Kills them all right then and there. Now, yeah, people would say, well, after he killed the mob, then what the hell? Why is he so weak now? Why can't he be the Michael we know? In this film, in this trilogy, Michael is not a supernatural being that is unstoppable. He took that beating in the street. He's, he's banged up, you know. He goes into the sewer pipe to recover. And does not kill for four years. And uh, yeah. People are like he's weak as hell you know. This made Michael look like a pushover. Let me give you some thoughts to consider here. 
let's go back to 2018 Halloween. He's been locked up in Smith Grove for 40 years. Because of all the other films, to the people hating it, the films that happened before, except for the first one, are ignored. They're completely forgotten about. They do not exist in this timeline. So he's locked up for 40 years. Hasn't killed in 40 years, right? He should be puny. Can't do shit, right? I believe, this is what I believe. This is the theory I took away from Halloween 2018 now that I've seen this one. When Sartain gets on the bus with Michael and sets Michael free so the bus can crash and Michael can he can see Michael in the wild. Michael killed those those people on the bus, except for Sartain. And that is what gave Michael the power, you know, the evil. It kind of went dormant inside of him. Until Sartain gave him the opportunity to kill again. And then people were saying, like, to me, that I talked to about this. Well, Loomis, you know, Dr. Loomis never got infected by the evil of Michael. He was around him a shit ton, you know, all the time. Michael, or Loomis, wanted to stop Michael from killing. He knew what Michael was, and he knew if he didn't stop it, the evil would spread uncontrollably. Sartain, on the other hand, wanted Michael to kill. He wanted to see what Michael does in the wild, and he just so happens to lead him to Laurie Strode. And then Michael, you know, kills all through those two movies, gets to Halloween ends after the beating in the street. He's gone away for four years. That evil inside has calmed down. He doesn't have that drive anymore, you know? And then Corey comes along. Michael grabs him, looks into his eyes, transfers that evil into Corey. And then Corey presumably becomes the new Michael Myers. That's the twist that they put on the film. So, yeah, okay. That's not what happens. You notice when Corey kills the homeless man. Okay. And then, the doctor, he's stabbing him when the girl finds him. He's doing all the mannerisms of Michael Myers. And even Laurie said, you know, when I look at him, when I see him, it's like I'm looking into Michael's eyes for the first time. She can tell that evil has infected him. And then, he kills the doctor, right? The girl locks him outside. Michael's in the house. And he kills that girl. And with every kill, it's like Michael's getting the strength back. You know? He's using Corey by infecting him with the evil to regain his strength and power because the evil is his power. It's not that Michael is superhuman or supernatural. It's the evil that infects him. And then Corey kills his mom. And all those little shits that were picking on him. The senior class kids. He kills all of them. And then he goes after Laurie Strode. But before that. He goes back to Michael. You have something I need. And he runs at Michael. And that's when the wrestling match that people are talking about starts. Michael's throwing him around pretty good. But you can visibly tell that Michael is weakened. And then Corey steals his mask. And then Michael sits straight up. With Corey on the way out of the sewer pipe. And I was like, yeah, that mask. There's something about that mask that can control the evil. It's like it's connected to the mask. This is such an interesting take on Halloween. I mean, it's completely different. Than anything we've seen before. And I think that's another reason people hate it. They don't like change. Like I said before. They want the same old formula. It gets old dude. Look at Rob Zombie's travesty. When he tried to make. His own story with Michael Myers. In Halloween 2. He clearly didn't know what the hell he was doing. 
Now, the, the evil thing, you know, people are like, what, the evil goes into some kid? Yeah, we've seen it before. Halloween 4. Remember at the end? When Jamie Lloyd stabs her foster mother? After touching the hand of Michael Myers? Before he's blown down the mine shaft? The evil transferred to her. At that particular time, she stabs her foster mother. This is not something new. It's just David Green, David Gordon Green's take on it. I personally loved the movie. I thought it was amazing. Because it is so different. And I'm one of the few that also like Jason Goes to Hell. Which is very similar to this film. Where Jason's evil goes into other people's bodies. And does the work for him until he is reborn at the end. And then Michael, you know, Corey kills his mom. Like I said, all those kids that were picking on him. The radio station DJ dude got it real good. And was there anybody else? Oh, no. He goes after Lori, right? But you know that shit ain't happening. Lori's too smart for that. And then he... Stabs himself in the throat. Michael returns to collect what Corey stole from him. And then let's get into that. The final fight. This is not Laurie's proper send off is all I've heard. What do you guys want to happen? Do you want her to die? That's such a cop out. You can see that coming for a mile, from a mile away, dude. I mean... That's not her proper send-off. If they were to kill her off, you'd already know the end of the movie. That's exactly what I thought when she said, this is the last time I will play Laurie Strode. I'm like, well, she has to die. Just like they killed Dewey off in, in Scream. Scream 5. I don't know, dude. I don't get the hate. You have to go into this film with an open mind. No expectations. And forget... Everything you think you know about Michael Myers. Because remember, for those that seen Halloween Kills, at the end, Jamie Lee is talking, or Laurie Strode, is talking about what the true curse of Michael Myers is. It's the evil and the fear that he instilled into the town. And that's something you can see in the film. They, they, they hate Laurie. The town is making her into a villain, not the hero. They're making her like an anti-hero. And then Corey. He's accused of killing the kid in the beginning. And then the town completely brands him a psychopath. His own mom, you know. Not his own mom, but the little boy's mom sees him in the Halloween party. Can't believe you're out here having fun after you killed my son. You know? And I guess it's a whole, you know, you get called something long enough, you start to you start to exhibit it, you know? And Michael was just the little bit of a push that he needed. And Michael's evil infected him. And then, if you notice, when he's killing the kids and people that he does kill, he's got all of Michael's power. Because he's infected by that evil. That is the true curse of Michael Myers. The evil that lives in him. And I, I personally don't think this will be the end of Halloween. Because, just because Michael's dead, doesn't mean... That the evil of people will die. And that's kind of what this movie shows. The evil. That people can. Put onto others. The evil that people can cause to others. Through their actions. Not just their words. It's the evil they can speak onto people. With their words. And the evil. That they can commit. Through their actions. And Michael uses Corey. They said he's like an, he's like Michael's colleague. 
He uses Corey to get his strength back through the killing that this kid does to finally confront Laurie Strode for the final time. Now that fight scene, let's get on that one. People hate it. They do. It looked like Michael was, you know, he's not Michael. Or some people, Jason would have never let it go down that way. This is not Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees is a completely different entity from Michael Myers. That's the reason they're not, I don't believe they'll ever be able to get a solid story for, for uh, Jason versus Michael. Because, dude, the movie would be five minutes long. Five minutes for them to find each other. And then as soon as Michael stabs him, Jason's putting his hand straight through him. And that's that's that. Because Michael is a human being, like I said. And it seems that without that mask, he's no more, he's no more unstoppable than me and you. Then when he puts that mask on, it's almost like that evil is reborn inside. Now, yeah, he was a little bit, you know, a little bit weak in the final fight. But was he holding back like like people say he did? No. He was throwing Lori all over the place, slamming her face into china cabinets and trying to stick a, a knitting needle through her ear. But then they take him after she beats the hell out of him and completely destroys him, cuts his throat, slits his wrists, or one wrist. They take him and parade him through the town to show the town the boogeyman is finally dead. You can all start to heal now. There will be no more evil because the evil is dead. And that's what Sam Loomis always called Michael, the evil. When he first gets in that car in the original movie and takes off to Haddonfield, what does Sam Loomis say? The evil is gone from here. Because Loomis knew he's not a human being. He is pure evil. But without that mask, he's no more, he's no more unstoppable than me and you. Now did, you know, once they parade him through the, the town, they take him to the junkyard. And they put him into the scrap shredder. Shred him up. Body is completely gone. That is what Sam Loomis said in 2018 Halloween. I want my ear to his chest so that I can see that or hear that his vitals no longer function. And then completely incinerate the body. Destroy the body. That's what Jamie finally did. Well, not Jamie. Lori finally did. Jamie Lee Curtis. I keep saying Jamie Lee Curtis because she's the one that plays her. But then, you know, think about it. Does evil ever really die? It just rests a while. I think there'll be more Halloweens. And the, the, some director will come up in his head with his own story of how he wants to tell Michael's story and they'll continue it some way. I don't know how. So now let's get into what I think are some negatives of the film. I can't agree that, yeah, Michael, you know, he didn't have as big of a part in the film. But the time that he was on screen was awesome. And I don't, I don't mind that because I sat through Jason Goes to Hell countless times and I can deal with that movie just fine. Some more positive music, musical score, right on point with every scene. I think it captured the emotion that was going on, the intensity that was happening. You know, John Carpenter never disappoints, ever, with his soundtracks for Halloween. The gore. Right there, just like a slasher flick should be. So that's my positive. Michael's look is another one. I really love it. I really love the way he looked in this film. Something about the way that James Jude Courtney plays him, just, it really, like, it makes me scared a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. 
you know? It's like, damn, dude, if I was walking around outside and I seen that, I seen him standing there, I'd shit all over myself. And now let's get to the negatives, because there's not that many positives for me. The negatives is that Michael wasn't on screen enough. I can't admit that. And then Corey's character development was a bit too drawn out. It really was. Because, you know, most psychopaths in these films are kept a mystery. You don't really want to know what causes them to be the way they are. But that was what James, uh, what was his name? David Gordon Green was going for here. He was wanting to show people how Michael's evil can infect somebody and make them almost just like him. It's so powerful. Another negative was that Lindsay was like a, took a back seat. She didn't have a major role like she did in the last movie. And then Allison was cool. I really liked her character. I thought it was kind of strange how she just instantly connected to this new kid here. And then Michael seeming weak was a little bit of like, oh man, but I kind of understand it. You know, because what are you going to do if you get the hell beat out of you by, I don't know, 15, 16 people? You're not going to want to keep going through town killing everybody. You're going away to heal for a little bit. Because don't forget, he's not a supernatural being in this film. He is a normal guy. Let's see if I can think of any other negatives. I can't really think of too many. Even my parents said they can't figure out why people hate this so much. It's unique. It's a different take on the film. You know, we've seen, like I've said, we have seen Michael kill 13 people and then get stopped by the final girl, what, 12 times? If you like Halloween 1978, Halloween 4, and all the other films, and you want to shit on this one just because it's not like those films, go watch those. I am in the minority of the people that like this movie. And I might get hated in the comments here for this, you know. But I was watching it earlier with my parents and I was sitting here. And I was like, wait. Michael knows he's too weak to take on Laura Strode. He knows he can't do it in the state he's in. And so he needs some help to get his strength back. That is what this Corey kid is Ford. That's his role. And Michael selects him to make it happen. And I was like, damn, that is really awesome because it really can. I mean, you know, evil can be transferred to someone else. I mean, say you see someone commit a horrible crime and you can't stop thinking about it. And then you keep obsessing on that. What is that going to do? It's going to make you want to know what does that feel like? You know, just like Sartain in 2018. When he stabs Officer Hawkins in the neck. So this is what it feels like. You know, that can really happen to people. And people may not believe that, but it can. So there's not a lot of negatives. I mean, Michael not having enough screen time. A little bit weak, you know. Him seeming weak was a little bit of a drag, but not enough to make me not like the movie. And then the final fight. I don't see why people are so disappointed in it. And when that started up, I was completely up in my chair watching the movie. Just like, wow, is she going to die? Are they both going to die? You know? What's going to happen here? And then no, Lori survives and finally destroys the evil that has haunted her for 40 years. And Corey does steal Michael's mask and that is the final straw for Michael. You don't take his mask. And if you do, you're not living to see tomorrow. 
as Corey did find out. I thought it was a little bit shitty too that Corey stabs himself in the throat. Trying to frame Lori to turn Allison against Lori. You know, make my make your granddaughter hate you for what you've done. And it does work. But then somehow, right as you think Lori Strode's going to be killed, Allison comes back, breaks his arm, and then helps her grandmother. It's a really good movie, man. You just have to approach this with an open mind and no expectations and forget everything you think you know because you are about to get an absolutely, how can I put this without cussing too much, mindfuck of a movie. I mean, that's what this was for me. Now, there's a lot of scenes in it that, yeah, it kind of seemed pointless. Like the kids picking on Corey, you know, I was like, well, that's kind of stupid because I've been there, you know, I've been there, I've been through that and it, it can really piss you off inside. And so maybe that's why Michael chose him to transfer his evil into because he was already angry enough and Michael knew, hey, this kid is the kid I need because that anger is going to fuel that evil and every kill that Corey commits Makes Michael stronger. But all in all, I give the movie for me an 8 out of 10. Just because of the negatives that I mentioned. But there's no, there's more positives to it for me than there are negatives. You know? But I'm, I'm not one of those that will sit and watch a horror film and be like, Wow, this really sucks, I'm turning it off. And then I'm going to go tomorrow and shit all over it on social media. I will watch it to the end. And then I will watch it multiple times to see if I can kind of figure out what they're going for in the story. And that's what I did with this movie. And that's where I got the whole, you know, Michael knows that he's too weak to finally kill Laurie Strode. And he needs help. And that is so unique to me. They did it better than Jason Goes to Hell did. I mean, Jason Goes to Hell, Jason wasn't even on screen until the beginning of the film. And then the final act of the movie that was like, what, 15, 20 minutes long? I was so disappointed in that as a kid. But the more I watched the film, the more it grew on me. And when it comes to Blu-ray, I believe hopefully they will do an extended cut. And kind of tie up some of the loose ends that they left in this movie. Like, I don't understand the hobo guy and why he wants the mask and wants Corey to go back in there and get that mask because I'm Michael Myers now, you know, or something like that. I was like, what the hell is the point of this guy? I didn't get that part. And then another, another negative I've got is just not long enough, dude. An hour and 50 minutes is not long enough. I would have loved to have seen Michael get to full power and do some more killing in Haddonfield. You know, I really would have liked to have seen that, but that's not what they were going for here. They're not going for that usual formula that we're all so used to. They wanted to make a unique film that's unlike any Halloween we've ever had. And I think they nailed it on this. I really do. I mean, I'm not going to shit on it. I can shit on it a little bit, you know. But there's not a whole lot to shit on. Other than the, the character development for Corey was a bit drawn out. That that was really like, my first time watching it, man, I was like, eh, kind of getting bored. Where's Michael at? You know? And then he takes Doug down to the, he leads Doug down to the pipe. And makes him come in there after him. And Michael proceeds to do what Michael does. But you can. this is where you can tell he's weak. He hasn't killed in a while. And then Corey helps him by holding that cop. After he beats him up a little bit. Knocks him down. He holds him down for Michael. So that Michael can cut his throat. And then get like six or eight stabs in him. 
then you see Michael start shaking like like that. And then his head kind of flinching. And then he one last time. And he's standing there upright this time. And I was like, yeah, he's getting stronger. And he's using this kid to make it happen. And the final fight was probably the best I've seen in a Halloween film. I mean, it really totally topped 2018. I've never seen Michael get that messed up in a final fight. I was like, damn, man, what are they going to do to him? I mean, he's still alive. When you got all the knives stabbing in him, you can still hear him breathing through that mask. And it's like, he's still alive. I mean, she knows he's not dead. She can't leave him like this. Takes the mask off. Cuts his throat. And then... He still has the energy to grab her by the throat and almost completely crush her neck. He was working on it. He really was. But then... Allison comes to save the day. And that's one drawback I'll give Allison. Is that her character seemed a bit whorish. You know? And I was like, man, that's really low for someone that's been through what she's been through. (laughs) And you know that's a cardinal rule. In horror films, you don't have sex no matter what. She should have died if it's going by the formula of horror movies. She had sex with a psychopath, just like in Scream, with Billy and Sydney. But Sydney did not die. And I was like, in Scream, I was like, wow, dude, they really kind of screwed up there because that's a cardinal rule. And Scream is completely based on the horror movie rules. But I love movies that break the horror movie rules. And Halloween Ends is one of those films. It completely breaks the rules and blazes its own trail and it's so unique it's awesome i went and bought the mask if they make the coveralls i'm getting those i can't wait for the blu-ray release i do give it an eight out of ten you guys can hate me i'll give a shit it's a great film if you go into it with the right perspective so that's all i got to say i hope you guys enjoyed And sorry if it was all over the place, I just had a lot to talk about, and it was hard to kind of keep it all straight in my head because of ADHD. But that's all I got to say, and I hope you guys enjoy. Rock on, and go watch it, dude. Go watch it. And don't watch this movie like you would a normal slasher flick. You watch this film, really pay attention to it. You have to immerse yourself in it. Don't have any distractions. Turn your phone off. Turn the internet off. Unless you're using Peacock, you got to keep your internet for that. But just, just go into it, focus, and really watch like a true horror fan. We dissect this stuff. We watch it, and we take everything in. And as it's playing, we start to develop things in our head. I don't know if I'm right on the theory that I got from the movie, you know, where Michael knows he's not strong enough to kill her, so he uses this kid to help him get his strength back until he feels comfortable that I can do it, you know? He clearly didn't, and there's no possible way that he can come back now. (laughs) But like I said, this isn't the end of Halloween. I can just about guarantee it. There will be some director come along and do his own version. Just like Rob Zombie did. And God, I hope it's better than that. Halloween Ends is much better than Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. That is the first Halloween that I watched in a theater. And when it was over, I stood up and said, that was the worst piece of shit I've ever paid money for. Now, did I buy it on Blu-ray? Absolutely. (laughs) Sure did. And this one. Although it's not a perfect film, still a solid entry in the series. And I think that David Gordon Green did a great thing. Like I said, you guys can hate me if you want. I don't care. 
I really love the film. And I hope they continue it later down the road. But if they don't, I'm okay with that. Because like I said before, man, how many times can we see the same old film over and over and over again? So anyway, take care of you guys. And thanks for watching. Give me my hate comments. I know they're coming. So just give it to me. And let me know what you guys think of the film too. Because I know there's one subscriber I've got. He's going to see it here. I think tonight he was going to see it. Let me know, dude. Let me know what you thought. And, and tell me if you hated it. And if you did, that's fine. To all the people that hate it, I'm okay with it. You know, just give it a few more watches and go into it open-minded. And forget what you know about Halloween. Because this isn't the same old movie. Even Jamie Lee Curtis said this film is going to be like the most divisive Halloween film ever. Some people will hate it. Some people will like it. And that's exactly what happened. Although more hate it than like it. <laughs> So, okay, I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. Take care. Subscribe, like, share the video if you want to. And give me my hate comments, dude. We'll see you guys next time.